All right. So we are in a series, and I believe this will be the last message of this series titled Seeking His Glory. We're in part seven already. I mean, it's amazing how fast the weeks go. But we have been discovering how to see the glory of God manifested in our lives. Because Christians are called to manifest the glory. Amen. Amen. Manifest the glory of God in the earth. And that, as we've been saying throughout the series, separates us from dry, dead religion. <laughs> that separates us from cults, right? Where, where people come together and they go, is it time to go yet? Is it time for lunch? Da, da, da. <laughs> now. We want God here. Amen. Amen. We want, we want the manifest presence of the living God to show up when we meet. Amen. Not only when we meet, of course, we want him in our car with us as we praise and worship him and talk to him and fellowship with him. Come on and meditate on his word. We want him in our bedroom. We want him everywhere, but we, we have to know, first of all, that God wants that for us. Yeah. But we have to know a lot of what that involves and how to, how to do that. Amen? There are steps involved in, in God's plans for us. And a lot of times people miss out on steps. They miss out on things because they won't listen, right? I was just talking with Karen this morning about some verses. And I'm like, you know, still many Christians wouldn't, wouldn't know this verse. And it's one of the most important verses in the Bible. And it's very frustrating <laughs> as a pastor. Many verses that you're like, whoo, come on. This verse changed my life. And then, and then you talk to Christians, they have no clue. Well, we got to get in the word, amen? And we got to know what he said. And so every, every week, of course, in the preaching of the word, we discover what God said. And if we haven't been walking in that, come on, we haven't been, we haven't been in this case, in this case of the subject or we're under manifesting the glory of God, we start submitting to God's word and we start manifesting the glory of God in our lives. Amen? Come on. That, that's what our lives should be full of. Our church should be full of it. Our lives should be full of it. The glory of God manifested in our lives and through us and through our lives. And of course, when we speak of God's glory, we've been talking about this every week. The glory, the word glory in the Hebrew is kavod and it literally means weight. So when God shows up, it's heavy. <laughs> His way is heavy. In fact, literally it means when, when the glory of God shows up, God shows up with all that he is. All that he is. When the glory of God is manifested, God shows up. Boom. And we talked about a lot of manifestations of glory in the Old Testament uh, and how the glory cloud filled the temple, right? And they couldn't minister. The ministers couldn't minister because of the glory cloud. There was too much power there. There was too much heaviness there. That's what I want. <laughs> Come on now. Too much. There's too much. I like the too much. Don't you like too much of God? Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, I told you the story probably that maybe the first week. I don't remember if it was first week, but uh, one, of my, one of the preachers that I've followed for years, Rodney Howard Brown, if you haven't heard of him, he's a pastor in Florida now. But he came to America from South Africa and he came to evangelize America. That's that. <laughs> God told him to come to America and evangelize America. And I was in one of his meetings back, way back in like 90, way back, 93, so somewhere in there. And he came to our Bible school and I'd never heard of him at the point, you know, but he, he, was, he was traveling the nation evangelizing. And you talk about heaviness of God. Oh, I tell you, the heaviness showed up big time. A weightiness of God showed up. In fact, I told you the story of how many times in his meetings, not only where I was in, but many, you can look it up, but you'll see, you can even see him on uh, you know, YouTube or whatever nowadays still. But people would come up to testify what had God had done in their lives in the meeting, right? And they'd grab the mic and he'd give them the mic and he'd say, what, what, what has God done in your life today? And they'd go, uh, Uh, uh. 
I'm serious. You could look it up. And they're like, hmm. and they hand the mic back to them. <laughs> Why? Because God's heaviness is there and they didn't, they couldn't even speak. Well, when God shows up, a lot of things we, we won't be able to do, right? When his, when his presence can be, his presence can come in waves, right? His presence can come in waves and we can get, we can get a light sprinkle. You know, if you've been living in Washington long, you know about light sprinkles, right? There's a light sprinkle almost 24, 365 days a year. Hey, it's, it's sprinkling again. And then of course we get downpours, right? Where you're like, woo, that's rain. That's rain right there. Well, God can show up in the same way. And the Holy Spirit is actually compared to rain. And so the Holy Spirit can show up in a light sprinkle. And the Holy Spirit can show up with a downpour. And I've been in all those type of services. And I tell you, those downpour ones, woo, they mess with you good. Because <laughs> you can't stand up. <laughs> Come on now. You can't talk. You can't do that all the time, but you can do it once in a while. Amen. When God shows up like that and you can't even talk. Oh, man, I, I, I got a kick out of those those meetings. And uh, some people, of course, are skeptics. And I remember one guy, one guy was a skeptic in the church and he, he's like, nah, that's not real. That's not real. That's not real. I don't believe it. And then God got a hold of him and he would, by the end, he was doing the exact same thing. And he got him testified and he couldn't testify. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Woo. Come on. God can show up with heaviness. Amen. Where people can't stand, people can't talk. The heaviness of God is there and all we want to do is go, oh. What are we doing? We're going, ooh, God, right? Our spirit, our spirit, man, ooh. And we're just basking in his presence. That's the good stuff right there. Come on. Basking in the presence of the living God. You can't get any better than that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ooh, I'm preaching already. Watch out. Let's, let's go over to John 14, 21, where we've been looked at every week. <clears throat> John 14, 21. And uh, this is Jesus, right? Jesus saying, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Notice manifest, right? Presence, manifestation of God himself. The glory of God manifested. Now, this should be our greatest desire right here. Hello? This should be our greatest desire. The manifest presence of God himself. There should be no higher desire in a Christian's life. Amen? People have a lot of desires in this world. Have you noticed? People have a lot of desires to do a lot of different things, right? They desire to go to Disney World. <laughs> they desire to go to Hawaii, right? They desire to become famous. A lot of people have a desire, right? That's why, you know, the American Idol show, voice show, whatever show, another show, another show, another show to become famous. Right? Well, yeah. If you, if you become famous, I'll tell you what, you better use it for his glory. I, I love the sports stars who get on there and they say, this first thing they say, what brought you to this place, this World Series win or, you know, whatever, Super Bowl win? What, what do you give the uh, thanks to? I give thanks to Almighty God, my Creator, my God. I give thanks to the Lord, my Lord Jesus Christ. And you're like, yeah, woo! Come on, brother, preach it. And he's preaching to the whole world, right? The Super Bowl win, and he gets on there, thanks be to God, thanks to be the, my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm like, yeah. You, you need to be famous. A lot of them don't need to be famous, amen? But he needs to be famous, or she needs to be famous. When they give glory to God, that's good. <laughs> but people have desires for a lot of things. Big houses, high paying jobs. I mean, people sacrifice their whole life, right? For a big house and a high paying job. That's their whole desire of their life. Well, that, that's not a good, that's not a good uh, uh, thing to have. I mean, that, I mean, a good thing to desire. Uh, you, it's fine to have a big house and a high paying job. Nothing wrong with that, amen? Those are fine. 
But what is your motive? What is your heart, right? What is your heart? What is your motive for all of that? What's the reason for it, right? Is it to impress the Jones, impress the, what are they called? Uh, what, keeping up with the Joneses, is that what they call it? <laughs> yeah, keep up with the Joneses next door. Ooh, they got a new car. Oh, we gotta go get a new car. Hmm. Honey, we gotta get a new car. They got a new car. Who did you, did you see that new, that new, that new porch they built in the back of the house? That is so cool. They got the fire pit built in. They got the propane gas oven. They got, woo, we got to get that, honey. We got to get that. Hello? Now it's not wrong to have nice things. Amen. It's wonderful to have nice things, but always, always turn back to God and give him the glory. Amen. Always thank him for whatever you have. Come on. Thank him for that house. Thank him for that car. Thank him for everything. Amen. That's why we give thanks at our meals, right? We give thanks for food. Thank God we get to eat today. Otherwise, we're not going to live very long. <laughs> Come on now. Our greatest desire should be the manifest presence of God. Amen. When we go on to be with Jesus, like Clara, we, we get to be in the presence of God. That's the best place to be, the manifest presence of the living God. So that should be our highest desire. And we need the manifest presence of God. Amen? We need it. In our homes, in our lives, in our church body, we need it. And the first key is right in this verse, you got to love Jesus. <laughs> Amen? We got to really have true love for Jesus. He who loves me will be loved by, by my father. Come on. True love for Jesus. First key, we got to have real love for him. And then we've been talking about reality for weeks now. We, we, have, we came out of a series called Authentic Faith. Reality, right? The reality. We need real love for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Not just like Jesus. We don't, we don't just like Jesus. We love Jesus. And we are burning hot for Jesus. We, we, we've done several messages on that. Or, or, well, over the years, many messages like that. But in this series, we did a whole message on zeal, burning, burning love. We're zealous for the things of God. And of course, when we truly love him, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to do what he said. He who casts my commands and keeps them, it is he who loves me. So whenever we find a doer of the word, we found our true lover of God. Amen. And the doer of the word, the doer of the word who loves Jesus is going to have the manifestation of God. We're going to have the manifest presence of God. Jesus will manifest himself to us. That is some good news. <laughs> that is some exciting news. That is wonderful news. That's part of the good news of the gospel that we get to walk and talk with God himself. Woo! God himself. God. We're going to walk with God. Come on. Through our lives. Talk with God. Have the manifest presence of God. Amen. In our, in our, in our, in our bedroom, in our office, we can have the manifest presence of the living God. Ooh, that's some good, that's some, that's some real good news right there. <laughs> Ooh. And so we're talking about that. We're learning all about it. So let's look again at John 11, where Lazarus was raised from the dead. And we found another great key here. If we want the manifest presence of God in John eleven thirty eight, Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Right? That's, 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 yeah. Not smelling good at this point, right? Lazarus is not doing good here. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So Jesus answers her point which in the natural was a good point. That's a pretty good point, right? Go back to uh, 39 there. Go back to 
39 there. <laughs> Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead four days, right? That's a good point in the natural realm, isn't it? I mean, that's a really good point. Because you're in the natural, you're thinking, uh, no, 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 Jesus. That's not going to work because he's been dead four days and no, no, no. It's not going to smell good. Do not open that, Jesus. Right? Uh, 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 Jesus said to her, did I say if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. This is a manifestation of the glory of God. Lazarus being raised from the dead. And of course, we know he was raised from the dead, right? Jesus said, come out, Lazarus. Ooh, and Lazarus got up. In his, in, you know, in wrapped up. In the, they, they, he, they took it off and he's walking around. And by dinner time, he's sitting at the table having dinner, eating biscuits. They're like, that's Lazarus. He's right there. Look at that. Can you imagine eating dinner with Lazarus? He was just dead four days. And you're like, look at that. Look at that. There's Lazarus. He's eating. Woo. <laughs> that's amazing. That is, a, that is a glory of God, right? This is the glory of God revealed right here. And the second key here is faith, belief, yeah. right? Who we got a big part to play in the manifested glory of God. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand they have a big part to play, but we have a big part to play. God is not manifested everywhere. People say, whoa, 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 what? what? God is not manifested everywhere. He is everywhere. <laughs> Catch the difference? Yeah. God is everywhere but he is not manifested everywhere. Where is he manifested? Where people love him. And people are doing what he said to do. You can go into churches where you're like, what's going on in here? <laughs> Don't you want God in this place? Come on. Ugh, it's dry and dead, dry and dead, right? Well, if they're not willing to worship God, come on. They're not willing to do what Jesus said to do right there. That's just one tiny thing Jesus said. Come on, you will worship in spirit and in truth. Come on, the time is coming when you worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Oh, man. And he even said the rocks, if you don't praise, if you don't praise God, come on, the rocks will cry out in your place. Uh. See, see, we got a big part to play in the manifested glory of God. If you don't want him, guess what? He doesn't show up. <laughs> Come on now. If you don't want the presence of God, he won't show up. He will not manifest himself to anybody if they don't want it. Hello? Hello? That, that goes with, like I was talking about, Rodney Howard Brown. You know, those, those meetings were power, power packed yeah. in Tulsa. And people wanted the presence of God. People were hungry for the manifest presence of God, and that's what they got. <laughs> that's what they got. Come on now. Well, it just doesn't it have to do, do with me. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah, it has a lot to do with you and me. Hello? That's what, that's what the Christians don't understand in, in great, great large amounts. They do not understand that it's based on their behavior of what they're doing. Are they following the words of God? Are they doing what Jesus said to do? Are they following the word of God? Do they have any faith? Hello? Notice, believe. You know, how do we know these guys had belief? How do we know there was actually faith? In the, in the Lazarus story. How do we know? I told you, I told you once, remember. Results, good. A very, very specific action that took place. Move the stone, move the stone. If they had no real belief, they had no real faith, Jesus said, move the stone. They would have gone, mm -mm 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 -mm. he's dead and he stinks. And I will not be moving that stone. Jesus, do it yourself. If you can by yourself, I don't know. Maybe you can get someone to help you, but I'm not doing it. How do we know they had faith? They said, all right, Jesus, here we go. 
How do we know they had faith when, when Jesus said, fill the water pots, fill up the water pots when they wanted wine at the wedding? Because they did it. They filled up the pots to overflowing with water and worked their entails off to do it. It's not, it wasn't turn on the faucet. Hello. Yeah. Hour later, yeah, it's full, Jesus, it's full. No, it was all, shh, go back to the well, right? All, shh. How, how do we know they had faith? They had action. And they did what Jesus said to do. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I said to do. And you will see, come on, you, you will be acting with faith. You will have belief and you will, you will see the manifested glory of God as they did when they saw the water turn to wine. As they did when they saw Lazarus walk out of the tomb. Come on now. You getting this? Come on. Notice, notice here. Notice here the big word if. If in verse 40. If, if. We have 40 up there. If. If you would believe, if is a big word in the Bible, a very big word. It's one of the biggest words in the Bible, even though it's one of the smallest. <laughs> Come on now. Many don't like the word if. Oh, my, my. You can talk to a lot of churchgoers who do not like the word if, right? They just want God to do it. They just want God to show up and do it. God says, work with me. Partner with me. Let's do this together. Which is wonderful. We get to work with God. Come on. We aren't just expecting God to do it all. We work with him. We do what he said to do. In fact, I was just reading a minister the other day that I follow. I love him. He's, he's, uh, he's, he put out a, a Facebook post and said, I'm not sure I got the exact number right, but he said there are 800 imperative instructions in the New Testament in the Greek tense of do this in the New Testament. 800 do this in the, in the New Testament. 800 do this is. <laughs> 800 do this is. Come on. They're not to be right with God. Amen. You don't, you, don't, you don't get saved because of that. You get saved because you confess Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart he's alive from the dead. Amen. But then along the way, we, have, we are saved unto good works. And Paul was one of the main, and of course, James, woo, uh, uh, things to do. Do this, right? Jesus, believe this. Believe, right? That, that's actually an imperative construction right there. Present tense imperative instruction. Believe. That means right now, do it. <laughs> That's like when you pray, you know, when you pray, if you come up here and pray today, you believe when you receive. And it's right now. Come on. The belief is now. You do it now. And therefore, it's not later. Which is where a lot of people leave it. Right? They pray, but really there was no real faith, and they think, well, later, you know, God might just show up. <laughs> no, you believe when you pray. Come on now. This is change your life. If you get a hold of it, you, you got to believe to see the glory. There's got to be real, authentic faith, right? We talked about it for weeks. Believe to see the glory of God. Real faith always has great expectation. Why? Because you believe something's going to happen. And so you are full of expectation. Woo! <laughs> when we believe God, we should be expecting, right? Expectation is high. Woo! Church is not like going to the movies. Amen? Amen. What, what do people go to the movies for? To be entertained. In church, a lot of people come to be entertained. You can see it, you can see it all over the place. But that's not the point of church. The point of church is to be actively believing God together as a body. 
That's why we pray at the beginning that we'd all hear from heaven. We agree together in prayer that we're all going to hear from heaven today. And so we're actively believing God right now and right now and right now and right now. And you get the point? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is. And now faith is. And now faith is. And now faith is. And now, and now, and now. That's why you never stop believing. Now, 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 now. You're still believing. You're not wishing and a hoping, amen? You're not wishing and a hoping God's going to show up. You believed, and you're still believing. It's now, 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 now. Hallelujah. Glory. So at church, we're supposed to be believing God for his glory to show up. Right? God wants to manifest himself right here. God wants to show up big time right here. But the problem is we got, we got to understand that it's not all, not all up to God. Hello? We have to understand that. We have to understand it's not all up to God to show up here today. Hello? We're partnering with him. We're believing God actively right now. Amen? Amen. Believing God even now and even now and even now and now, 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 now. Come on now. We got to actually want him to show up. Amen? So, so we're believing, we're expecting him to show up. Right now. Amen? Amen? We, we, we must not be more concerned about lunch than God's presence. <laughs> right? We talk about all the time. Church, you know, so many churches, well, the clock's, uh, sorry, the clock's over. Church is over. Sorry. It's over. Yep, it's done. We got to go to lunch. My parents, my dad told a story for years in his church, you know, back, back you know, years ago. But the, the, guy, the guy in the front row who would go to the pastor... In other words, you're done. My, my, my stomach is turning and you are done, Pastor. And you can be assured. I, I know, I've lived it right here. You can be assured that if that pastor goes over, he will hear about it. From that gentleman at least, right? <laughs> and that gentleman will say, Pastor, you don't understand. The service is done at noon. Oh, I understand completely it's done at noon. I understand that. But when, when God's moving and I'm, I'm, I'm moving with the Holy Spirit, I, I will not be done. And you can be assured that man would leave the church over that. I've had that happen many times right here. Why? They don't really want the manifest presence of God. That's not the goal. They're, they're just checking off the box. But God is looking for a people that really, really, truly want him. Really want his presence. Come on. Really want to be with him. Really want to talk with him. Really want to hear from him. Come on. Really want his heaviness to show up. Want his, want his sprinkle, but not only want his sprinkle of his Holy Spirit, he, they want the downpour. Yeah, <laughs> Ooh, glory. We're going somewhere. We're getting there. You know, you know we got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta build the foundation again. So we, we are believing. Amen. To see the glory of God right here, right now. Amen. That's, that's a key, right? We love Jesus. We are believing God actively all the time. And then we talked about another key, which was zeal. Zeal for God. Zeal. Come on. Passion. Zeal for God's things, for God's house, for God's stuff, for God. We have zeal, right? We talked about Phineas. Who remembers Phineas? <laughs> what did Phineas do? He shoved a javelin through two people to kill him. Why? In the Old Testament, this is not a New Testament thing to do. Thank you. Do not shove javelins through people. But in the Old Testament, he, he, the, they were, he was defending God. He was defending the honor of God. And that, that's, whoo, that's glory. We should defend the honor of God. And, and they brought back a Moabite woman. They were having fornication. They were, they, were, they were committing all kinds of sin. All of Israel, was, there was all kinds of sin going on. And he came back with a Moabite and was proud of it, right? And he's like, 
the, Phineas took the javelin and said, bye-bye, shoo, and killed them both at the same time. That's some zeal. That's some zeal for God's things. And Jesus, of course, we talked about Jesus having a whip and went into the temple, right? He took a whip and, and whipped the people out of the temple. Get out, get out, get out. And took the money, the tables, where they were selling all the doves and all that, whatever, <laughs> sacrifice, right? And said, get out. And threw the, threw the tables over and the money went flying through the air. Come on. Woo, what a day that would have been. What, what kind of zeal that would have been fun to see, wouldn't it? I want to see the repeat of that in heaven. I want to see a lot of repeats in heaven, amen? Any, any movies we're going to be watch, I believe it's going to be the real deal. Come on. I, I, I'm going to see the movies tonight. What are you going to see? I, I, I'm going to see when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And you see the real deal. You get to see the real deal, right? You get to see the actual event take place, right? But, woo, look at that. Woo, I've seen it 10,000 times, but it's still good. You watch a movie, you see a movie, you know, and you've seen it like three times. Well, you know, some people see movies oh, many times, right? And you're like, woo, how many times have you seen that? Oh, about 20 times. You're like, woo. You're like that movie, right? I don't mind seeing Lazarus raised from the dead 10,000 times, amen? amen? To see the glory of God revealed again in Lazarus, woo! Come on now. We, we got to have some zeal about it, right? We got to have some fervor for God, some intensity for God. Oh, I love to see some real intensity for God. You don't find it very often, but every once in a while you find it, right? You find real intensity for God. Ooh, that's fun. When you see someone who really, really, really wants God and they want, they want, ooh, they want God and they want him more than anything. Woo. And they'll defend him to the death. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Well, we could go off there for a long time, but you know. <laughs> Last week we talked about another key, which was submitting to God. Submitting to God in the way we live. The way we raise our kids. Hello. The way we treat our spouse. The way we treat our brothers and sisters in Christ. Hello? The, what we do with our money. Those are all submission factors. And those are all doing God's word. Right? If we rebel against the way to raise our kids, we're rebelling against God himself. If we rebel against the way we live, right, our daily lives, are, are, we, we are rebelling against God. If we rebel against the way we treat our brothers and sisters, we are rebelling against him. Hello? When we rebel against God, it's not good. And, and really, the more of God we want, the more submission to God there needs to be. Right? If we are not willing to submit to God's word, we, we will not, we will not have <laughs> much manifest glory in our lives. In fact, I would say those that will not submit to God's word end up on the, the lukewarm pile talked about in the book of Revelation. And guess, yeah, they get spit out. If we're not willing to submit to God's word, mm, hello? And that's very, very clear from our first verse, John 14, 21. We got to do what Jesus said. If we love him, we will do. Hello? And that's submitting to God. And if we don't submit to him, we are just plain church. We are just church goers. And we are just checking off boxes. Hello? You getting this? Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't want to be a box checker offer. No. I don't want to be in the lukewarm, that's for sure. And the only way, I, 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 I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it a thousand more. <laughs> the only way to not be a lukewarm 
a lukewarmy as we call them, is to submit to the word of God. Amen. I'm so tired of Christians who, who say, I'm a Christian. And you're like, oh, let's look at the word. Well, I don't really like that. You don't like that. Okay. Let's go over here. Let's look at this. Yeah, I don't really like that either. You don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Lukewarm. Hello? This churchgoer. Hello? Are you submitted to God's word? Yeah. All right, I got five people submitted. Good. <laughs> Let's look at Haggai. You, you want to go to Haggai? You like Haggai? Yeah. He's a good guy. Haggai's a good guy. Yeah, I like that. Hey, guy's a good guy. You don't like my rhyme? Wow. As I like to say, I'm a poet and don't know it, right? Haggai is a good guy. Chapter 2, Haggai 2. Verse 1. In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheel, Shealtiel. Well, that's a name right there. Governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is, that, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Now, it's a little, a little confusing in, in, that, in that translation. But what they were doing, they were looking at the old, and, and they thought it was better to what they were seeing now. The old, the former glory, the former temple was better. What you see now is nothing. Ooh, that's dangerous right there. What you see now is nothing. No, they liked the old better. They remembered the glory of the old. They thought what they had now did not compare to the old. And people do it all the time. Hello? Hello? It wasn't just for the Old Testament saints. Come on. Many Christians look back at amazement with the, at the Old Testament saints, right? They look back with amazement at Elijah. And you can hear him talking how amazing Elijah was. And you hear him talking about how amazing Elisha was. And hear him talking about how amazing Daniel was. Come on. How amazing Moses was. And they just look back. And they look back. And they look back. And of course, also... Uh, a lot, you've probably, if you haven't heard this, I don't know where you've been, but people many times have said, boy, if I could have just been there with Jesus. Oh, if I could have been there with Jesus. Whoa, I could have walked with Jesus. I could have been a disciple of Jesus. I could have been in the crowd with Jesus. Woo! If I could have been there, woo, that would have been something. Yeah. Well, it would have been something. But that's looking back. In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? Looking back, what we have now is nothing compared to that. Danger. 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 Come on now. This is another one. Many Christians look back at powerful services they've been in and they say, boy, if we could just have that. That was good. That was amazing. Hello? That, that was the best time. Well, and then, of course, looking forward is another way. Looking forward to a later date. Right? You, you've heard that, I'm sure. Oh, boy, when I fly away to glory, what a day that will be. Amen. That's a song, right? <laughs> I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away. Come on. When I get there, it's going to be amazing. Someday. Oh, someday. Well, I say today, what about now? Yeah. Yeah. I got two nows and one amen. <laughs> or two wows or whatever it was. I got two amens. I got two amens on that. I say today, what about today? Yeah. Yeah. You see, saints, when we're looking back and we're looking forward, we're in trouble. 
Because we need to live right here, right now. And even, I would just go over this right now, I was just thinking of this, even in church, right, people are thinking about something else. When I get to lunch, it's going to be good. I have this, oh man, I have got a sandwich prepared. I have got the prime rib in the oven. I've got this ready. Oh, it's going to be so good. What about right now? Because as we're focused on that, we're not experiencing this. Happens all the time. And people are focused on what's in the oven and the dog and the cat and what they got to go do and the bill they got to pay and they got to get online and pay that bill. Oh, I forgot to pay the bill. I forgot to pay the bill. I forgot to pay the bill. So the whole church service, I got for, I forgot to pay the bill. I got to get them. I got to pay the bill. Come on now. And so they're focused on something else, somewhere else, future events, and they're not experiencing now. title today is it's time for glory. It's time for glory. We need the manifested glory right now. Come on. Go on to verse four here. Verse four. Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord, and be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and be strong, all you people of the land. Who didn't like that? Ooh, be strong. Ooh says the Lord, and work. Oh, people don't like that word. Ooh, ooh, let's throw that out real quick. That, ooh, let's rip that out of the Bible real fast. Let's get rid of that work word. Let's get rid of word. For I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Are we supposed to work even in the new covenant? <laughs> yes, we are all to work. We're to do our part in the body. Hello? We could go on and on about that, right? On and on. But we're supposed to be doing our part as a body member. Paul talks about it many times, right? Doing our part as a part of the body. And all all members do their part. The thumb is gone. It's not easy. Hello? But if I have a thumb, that's that's easy stuff. Woo-hoo! I couldn't have done that without my thumb. Well, maybe, after 10 tries. <laughs> I'm going to take a swig. That sounds good right now. A little lemon in there. That's good stuff. Yeah. But every member, come on, every member of the body doing its part, that means work. Paul even said if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Hello? Every member needs to do its part. Come on, not only do we work in the secular world, we work in the body. And we work for Jesus. And when you're in the secular work, your job there is to manifest the glory. Come on now. Your job there is to manifest the glory of God. Do your part in the body. Be the thumb you're called to be. Be the the index finger you're called to be. Come on, be the big toe you're called to be. Be the knee you're supposed to be. Be the elbow you're supposed to be. Do the work. Come on, and work. We are saved unto good works. works. Give me chapter and verse. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10. I talk about it fairly often. It was right there. I know it was. I know it was. Remember last week we talked about we, I mentioned healing scriptures, and I said, if we're going to manifest healing in our bodies, we, we better have some healing scriptures in our hearts, right? We better, we better know some healing scriptures. Yeah. And so I know some of you know some healing scriptures now. Mm-hmm. You got one right there? Oh, yeah. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So, James 5.15. You got a healing scripture? Romans 8, 2. Heal me, O Lord. I like that. Mm-hmm. Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord that heals you. He heals the brokenhearted and binds the wounds. 
Psalm 147.3. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Very nice. Very nice. See, this is what I'm saying. We got to know what God said. Come on. And one of those things we just mentioned, right, was work. Yeah. Ephesians 10, 2, 10, we're saved unto good works. So immediately when someone tells me, and there's many of them today that, that don't work for God because they don't think they can add anything to their salvation. No, you can't add anything to your salvation, but you can do the work that he's called you to do. Amen. And you can work for him because he asks you to. And because you're a servant of the living God. Come on. Paul said, I'm a slave of Jesus. A doulos in the Greek. Well, slaves work, don't they? Yeah. And so as a slave of Jesus, I say, whatever you want, master, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Amen. Amen. And so we work. Amen. We all do our parts. You know, we all have assignments. Amen. If you haven't discovered your assignment yet, you better get busy. You better get busy and find out your assignment. Find out your part. Find out what part of the body you are. Get busy working for Jesus. Amen. Why? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Jesus is about to come back. And, and as we say all the time right here, our life is but a vapor. James says our life is but a vapor. And we are here and then we are gone, just like the vapor that rises up from the pot of, pot of spaghetti you're cooking. And the vapor comes up, you turn off the burner and the shh, a few minutes, you won't see any vapor. That's our life. It's here, it's gone. So we have a few minutes to do something for him. A few minutes to get something done for him. Work for him. Get busy for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're just going off on that for a while. Hallelujah. Let's go on verse five here. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. He said that a lot, didn't he? God said that a lot through his prophets throughout the whole Bible. I've never counted it, but I've heard, I've heard do not fear is 365 times in the Bible, which would be a one for every day. Verse six, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. <laughs> The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give you peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. So notice, the glory of the latter will be greater than the former. They were going to build something greater. It was going to be greater. And they kept saying that was greater. And God says, no, 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 no. It's not, no, 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 no. There's going to be greater. Amen. <laughs> See where we're going? See, God had much glory, much more glory for them. And they thought, they thought the old was better. They kept looking back at the old. God's not going to run out of glory. Yeah. God's not going to run out of anything, right? Look at, look, look at that. The, the silver and gold are all his. He's not running short. Amen? Amen? God has an abundant supply of everything for his children. You believe it? Yeah. Come on. There is much more glory to be poured out in the days we live right now. We must not think the, the best is past. No, 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 no. The, well, that, that, was, that, was, that was great. That was great. That, those guys were great. Jesus, great. Peter, great. Paul, great. James, great. They're great. Uh, but compared, compared to now, that, that was great. Uh-oh, trouble. <laughs> trouble. Trouble. Hello? There is much more. It's not time to rest on our laurels. You like that phrase? That means you don't do anything. You just sit back and relax. No, God has much more for us. 
In fact, I would say the best is yet to come. We haven't seen nothing yet. Come on, saints. We haven't seen anything yet. The best is a coming. (laughs) And I'm believing right now. And I'm believing right now. And I'm believing right now. (laughs) You know, Smith Wigglesworth, I talk about quite often, but a great man of God, one of the mightiest men of God has walked the earth. I mean, the miracles and the, and the, 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 the faith he had is beyond anybody in the last, whatever, anybody you read after. There's, whoo, wow. But he said, he prophesied it. He said, there's going to come a great revival of um, the uh, 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 healing ministry. And that, that was actually in the 40s and 50s. If you don't know, there was a huge healing revival across our nation. Or Roberts being part of that, many people, A.A. A. Allen, uh, Billy Sunday, uh, man, big names that you may not have heard of, but they, 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 were, they were, I mean, meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, hundreds of people healed. Wow. Legs growing out, eyes, blind eyes, ears growing out. I mean, hundreds of, hundreds. Yeah. And, and, and there was a great healing revival. He said, then there's going to come a great teaching revival from the word of God. And if you don't, if you haven't been around very long, I got saved in the teaching revival. I got saved in 91, and right then, the 80s and the 90s, whoo, oh my, the teaching of God's word. Wow. I mean, I still listen to those guys. A lot of guys today I don't care about, because they don't really teach much. But those guys, whoo, wow. That was power. And they taught the word, right? It was power packed, power packed stuff. The word was taught mightily. And I believe we need that, right? As we even said last week, we need the spirit, we need the word. If we just have spirit, we get flaky. If we just have word, we get religious and dry. We need both. And then Smith said, the last revival that will come before the end return of Jesus will be like nothing ever seen. And it'll be... The, the healing revival, the teaching revival, all combined plus. Hello? A great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You see why God's having us on this? Because we got to get ready for it. If God shows up and people start sticking to the floor, you better know what's happening. Come on now. When God's weight shows up, there there are going to be some people stuck to the floor. But see, the problem is most Christians don't want anything to do with it. Uh, You talk about Azusa Street Revival. I've had people run from me. Uh, You know, the Azusa Street Revival, they were rolling under the pews. They were swinging from the chandeliers, literally. Why? Because they were so excited about God. They didn't know to do themselves. You go on Mercer's Day, you're like, do you guys know God? Have you talked to him recently? You better have a conversation. Yeah. Come on now. Most, most Christians I found don't want to be filled with the Spirit. They don't want to even speak in tongues. And, and Jesus said, you shall speak in tongues. Amen. He said, go be baptized, wait in Jerusalem and be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they all were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. And then he went to Ephesus. I mean, we could go on and on. I can teach on it for hours. But he went to Ephesus and he said, to the believers in Ephesus, he said, have you heard of the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? They said, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. He said, well, let me tell you about it. As I would do. <laughs> let me tell you about the Holy Spirit, right? And then he, he laid hands on them. They all were filled with the Holy Spirit and they all began to speak in tongues and prophesy. Amen. See, that's what the church is supposed to be full of. And we have relegated or delegated all that off to to the fanatics. Well, you know, that church down the road, that Pacific Baba church, boy, they get a little wild in there. And if you want to go to that church, you're kind of weird. You might, you know, they kind of, sometimes they dance for the Lord in there. 
I mean, they take laps around the building. They shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on. They pray for the sick and they actually expect people to be healed. Yes, we do. We do all of the above. (laughs) Come on now. See, we have to actually want it. We have to actually want the presence of God. We have to actually want what he wants for us. Come on. We have to actually want him. We actually want him. People have gotten weird, right? Christianity's gotten weird. Where it's not even about Jesus. It's not about his presence. It's not about knowing him. It's like, well, we come to church and we read the Bible and then we go home. Huh? Huh? Come on. We don't want to be the Elks Club, do we? Hello? No. We want the glory. And we can have it if we want it. But saints, we actually have to want it. We have to desire him. We have to really, truly want him. We have to want his presence. We have to want to get undignified. Well, you got a song coming up, right? You can do that one? Is it called undignified? I will be undignified. I like that. Like David who danced in his underwear before the Lord. Come on now. If we're not willing to be undignified for Jesus, we got a problem. Well, I would never fall down on the floor under the power of God. Yeah, you won't either. <laughs> yeah, you won't. You won't fall under the power either. Come on. I told you a story. All right, here we go. Here we go. You know me. I tell a story. My kids like joke me. Dad, you told that story a lot. I say, I know. I'll tell it again too. <laughs> I was at a minister's conference and, and, and the minister there, I highly, highly respect, highly respect. And a uh, man of God, a real man of God, you know. And uh, he, he, he said, I, I want to pray for the ministers. We, well, we were all ministers there, minister conference. And he said, I want to pray for anybody who wants prayer tonight. He had, he had preached and he said, I want to pray for anybody who wants prayer. And, and he was praying, we, all, we, were, we were lined up front, he was praying for people. He was praying in tongues. He was praying in English. He was praying in the Spirit. He was praying in you know, English. He was praying for people, praying for people. Some people were falling. Some people were just getting prayer. They were standing there, worshiping God, getting prayer, laying hands on them. You know, Paul said, uh, Paul said I desire to lay hands on you that you might receive your, a spiritual gift. So as, as I'm sitting there, I'm like, Father, I'm just going to receive whatever spiritual gift. He, you know, if he lay hands on me, you, you have a spiritual gift to give unto me that I, I don't have yet. I just receive whatever you want, Father. And he's praying for people. And he comes and he lays hands on me and he prays in tongues over me. And, and he doesn't say anything in English at all. And no prophecy, no, you know, you, sometimes you want a word, from, especially from somebody you really respect. And you're like, no, nothing, just tongues. Okay, well, that's good. No, praise God, praise God, praise God, you know, praise God. And he goes on to Karn and he prays over her. And he actually says some things to her in, in, in English and tongues. And, and, and I'm sitting there going, oh, praise God, praise God. And all of a sudden, the heaviness hit me. We just talked about it. the glory, right? And, and the usher behind, was now behind Karin and was ready to catch her, right? Because they have catchers. Uh, they catch you, you don't want to hit your head on the floor. And, and so I was just worshiping there and, and the glory hit me and the heaviness of God hit me and I collapsed. Right there. And the usher was behind her and he reached over as I'm falling and kind of broke my fall from hitting just boom. He broke my fall a little bit, right? Boom. And I was down stuck to the floor laughing in the spirit, full of joy, full, full of God as we're supposed to be. Amen. Access the fullness of God. I was getting filled up with the Holy Ghost. And I don't know, I don't know what, you know, maybe there was a special spiritual gift that was even given in that moment that I'm operating right now. Amen. I actually, I actually believe this and, you know, it, it, you know, my preaching has improved since that point in time. And he is a wonderful preacher of the word of God. So, and he's a wonderful teacher of the word of God. 
And so maybe God imparted a spiritual gift. Yeah, all those are gifts from God. Teaching gifts, those are gifts from God. Spiritual gifts, there are many spiritual gifts God has for us, but sometimes either we don't want them, right? <laughs> and we haven't gotten the right place yet, or, or we, haven't, we haven't matured enough yet, right? If God had something for me at that point in time, he was ready, he's ready for it. He's ready for it. Because you've got to be ready. God's not going to just give gifts out for fun. Come on. When he gives the gift, whatever it is, you better be ready to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So there I am, stuck on the floor, laughing. As this happened to me before, actually, that was the, that was the, uh, whew, that was probably the third time that it happened, where I'm stuck on the floor, laughing my head off. And the ushers want to move me, and I say, I can't move. <laughs> and I'm laughing, and I'm stuck. Come on now. Yeah, oh, that's a good time right there. Yeah, that's a good time. That's a good service. Yeah. That's something you don't forget. That's glory. glory. Hello? And that's something God wants to do for us right here. Amen. He wants us to have glory here. He wants it, but we got to want it. Right. We got to actually want the glory. Because if we don't want it, guess what? He don't show up with it. Because you got to honor him. Honor is part of glory. We talked about the first week. Honor goes with glory. Honor goes with glory. There is no glory without honor. No, there is no glory without honor. Honoring God must be done to get the glory. Hello? Hello? We can have it if we want it. If we, if we really want it, right? It, it, we actually got to want it. We got to want to be used by him. We got to want to be vessels of honor for him. Come on. We, we got to submit to him. We got to want him. We got to want his presence right here. Come on. We got to want the heavy presence, the glory, the glory, the manifested presence, the heaviness of God to show up. We got to want it. Come on. We got to want it now. Amen. Because faith is now and faith is now and faith is now and faith is now. <laughs> Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. You want another scripture? Yeah. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> I think it was Christian last week. He said, yeah, that was a little short. A little short. You know, I was expecting a little more. You know, I think we were done by one or something. He's like, that. Faster. <laughs> yeah, you okay? I mean, shorten it up that. I mean, what? I mean, come on. Let's look at Hebrews 8.6. But now, yeah, there's now again, right? But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. Who? Jesus. In as much as he, Jesus, is also mediator of a what? A what? Better covenant. Did you catch it? Which was established on better promises. Well, that old, that old, that old is, oh man, the old, the old covenant. Whoa. Moses, whoa. Better covenant, better promises. Better. Come on. And who's the mediator? Jesus. Jesus wants to do great things through us right here. Jesus wants to manifest himself right here. Come on now. Jesus wants us to take the presence, the glory of God to everyone. Yeah, amen. The new covenant amen. is what we're supposed to be in yeah. and living in as Christians, right? We walk in the blessings of the new covenant. We do the new covenant. Yeah. Come on. We do the commandments in the New covenant. And there's a lot of them. 
800 imperative tense in the Greek. Come on. We walk in the power of the new covenant. It's a better covenant. And in the new covenant, we are to manifest God in the earth. And what happens to most believers, most, most Christians? Well, Jesus, Jesus did it. Jesus manifested the glory of God on the earth. Exactly. We can do. And not only can we, we are supposed to. Did he not even tell her at the grave, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Hello? We are supposed to do what God said and then manifest the glory of God. And the reason many Christians don't like that is because they believe God will do just what he wants to do. They think it does not matter what they do, which goes against the entire word from beginning to end. It matters greatly what we do. Who? Greatly. Even to the, even to the effect of, 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 of Revelation, where Jesus said, if you don't repent, does it matter what you do? Yes. Greatly. It matters what we do. So as Christians, we are supposed to do the words of Jesus. Amen. Do the word of God. Do the new covenant. Live in the new covenant. Live in the better covenant. Come on. The better covenant. It's a better covenant. Stop. We got to stop looking at the old and say that's better. We got to live in the new Amen. and walk in the new, which means we manifest the presence of God. When we are doing the words of God, the words of Jesus, if you love me, he said, if you love me, you're going to do what I said, and I will manifest myself to him. God's going to be manifested in our lives when we're actually doing what he said. The glory of God will be revealed right here. Come on now. Let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah 60. You're going to love this. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is arisen upon you. Remember, this is old. Who has a better? Hello? The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Hello? Do we have a better covenant? We got a better covenant than this. Woo! It's time to arise and shine. It's time to arise and shine. Come on. There is no more time for just doing our will. Why? We got to rise and take his glory to the world. And yes, you are part of that. You are part of that. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It has come. The glory of the Lord will be seen upon us. His children. Come on. His children living in the new covenant, living under it with his presence, talking to God, doing his word. Come on. We, woo, we got it so much better. You know, they couldn't talk to God like we can. They, could, they couldn't talk. To, he said the, the glory of the Lord's rising upon them. Imagine what we got. Are we temples of the Holy Spirit? Were they? No. Come on, saints. We are temples of God. Amen. Temples of the Holy Spirit. 
God came to live in us. And the Old Testament, come on, God would show up and speak through the prophet. And people would wait for the prophet to speak. And God said in the new, I'm going to come live in you. And I'm going to give you a heart of flesh for your heart of stone. He's going to make us a new creation. And he's going to make us the righteousness of God in Christ. I don't know if I can do the works of God. I don't know, pastor. I don't know. Ooh. Have you been made the righteousness of God? Have you been made the righteousness of God? Have you been cleansed from all sin? Are you righteous? Can you stand before God without shame or blame? Someone's getting it back there. Come on. <laughs> Christian's like. Come on. It's time to shine. Amen. Arise and shine. Right now. Yeah, now. <laughs> we might retitle it. Now. Oh, it, it's time for glory. Now is the time for glory. Oh, we use now a lot in this way. We got to use now in there. Come on. They don't have space. <laughs> the world is dark. Is, uh, did he say dark? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If it was dark then, it's dark now. And we are in one of the darkest, I, I believe this with all of my being, we are in one of the darkest times in the human history. If you're not aware of that, you better wake up. We, we are in one of the darkest times in human history. Everything God created is being turned on its head and perverted. Everything, everything God wants to do. Come on. Everything is being perverted. It is dark. It is dark. I used to read, I used to read, you know, uh, well, I remember, I remember reading, you know, when you read it again, but when, when, when in the Old Testament, right? When, when, when it was so dark in Sodom and Gomorrah that they would pull people out of their houses to have sex with them. That's in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's in the Bible. And I thought, wow, that was dark. And now it's happening right here, right now. It's currently happening. If you don't know, you've been asleep. You've been asleep. I just saw it on the news yesterday. A woman, I think it was New York, was just walking down the street. A minivan pulled her up, grabbed her, threw her in the van. She's gone. She's gone. They have no clue where she is. Hello? That's happening all the time. A lot of it's not even reported. Hello? We are in dark, dark, dark times. So who's, who's going to bring some light onto the scene? Us, the Jesus disciples. Come on now. Who, who else is going to manifest the glory? Well, I'll tell you, the world is not. As we said, God is everywhere, but he's not manifested everywhere. He is not manifested everywhere. Christian knows. He, glory knows. They're in the schools. God is not manifested everywhere. God has manifested, come on, where his people are walking in the light and doing the word and living in the new covenant and knowing the word. Come on, and walking in who they are in Christ Jesus. Yeah, amen. Right? If I, if I know who I am in Christ, I don't have a problem bringing the light in. Amen. Right? I'm not scared to bring the light in. Yeah, amen. I'm not scared to bring the light into anybody because he's right, they wrong. And I'll bring the light right in. Ooh, and they don't like it at all. But that's okay. That's okay. Come on now. We got to bring the light in. We got oh, to bring that light right into the darkness. Bring that light into the darkness and get some eyes open. Come on. No one else is going to do it. This is, what, this is what's going on. This is what's going on in the church. Come on. The church, the real church is being awakened. 
to do the will of God. To do the will of God now. Now. Here we go again. Now. To do the will of God now. Most of the church is still asleep, thinking, well, you know, back in the by and by, in the great by and by, it's going to be so good back the old way when we get there. Whoa. No. Now. Now is great. Now is wonderful. When you're living with God, Amen. when you're talking with God, when you're living in the new covenant, yeah, well, well, come on, well, when you're manifesting God's presence, when God is manifesting himself to you, which is what Jesus said, right? I'll manifest myself to him. Come on, saints. We got to get excited about this. We got to get on board with this. We got to get on the right train. <laughs> There's only one train going to heaven. I want to be on the right train. Lukewarm train ain't making it. Jesus said it very clearly. Lukewarm train ain't making it. Come on. The on fire train is making it. It's like there's two trains right now in the church world, right? There's the, there's the on fire church of God. And they're trucking through earth going, woo, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Let's lay hands on some sick. Let's get some people healed. Let's preach the word. Let's get excited about Jesus. Come on. That's one train going down the road. And then there's another train going. One day it's going to be good. One day it's going to be amazing. That's the lukewarm train. That's why I say all the time. What do I say at the beginning? We're disturbing the lukewarm. Saying. Tom Peterson. You know Tom Peterson, right? Wake up! Wake up! You know Tom Peterson. <laughs> Wake up! You, got, you look that up later. <laughs> Tom Peterson. Wake up! We're saying, wake up! Jesus is about to show up in the clouds. Jesus is... He's going to show up just as he went. The angel said, you'll see him in the clouds. Just like he went up, you're going to see him again. What are you staring at? They, even the angel's like, what are you guys doing, man? <laughs> to them, to them, it's, they're in eternity. Just like God is in eternity. We look at 2,000 years as, oh my, 2,000 years has gone by since Jesus was here. Oh, and the angels and God go, yeah, Jesus left the earth a couple seconds ago. Come on, you getting this? Yeah. It's time for the glory. Now yes. is the time to shine. Yes. This is the hour. This is the time. If you get one thing today, come on, get it through, right? That this is the time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to do it now. Amen. I'm going to live for God now. I'm going to manifest the glory now. Yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak the word now. I'm going to preach the word now. I'm going to tell my neighbor now. I'm going to manifest the glory to my relative now. I, I'm going to do it now. Yeah, Instead of saying, boy, wow, whew, someday, someday, someday I'm going to be on fire for Jesus. Someday I'm going to manifest the glory of God. Someday it's going to happen. Someday when I get, when I get fully mature, <laughs> When I get fully mature in Christ, I'm going to start, I'm going to start that pastor. When I get fully mature, no, now. You don't have to be fully mature to manifest the glory. You just got to do what you know to do. And what happens when you know, you do what you know to do, God shows you more. And this is the problem that many run into. They will not do what God said to do, so they don't go any further. Because they will not submit to God. So they don't go any further in God. What do you do? 
You do what you know to do right now. You walk in the light that you have. And then God gives you more light. But you got to do what you know to do now. Come on up. This is big. You don't think this is just a little small point. This is big, big point. You got to do what you know to do now. Now. You walk in the light you have now. You walk in that light. If you don't want to walk in the light you have now. Hello? You don't have to be, you don't have to be fully mature in Christ, but you need to do what you need to do now. Well, think of thinking of my salvation. When I got saved, I don't know why, except the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Why, why did I, why did I run to a, why did I run to a spirit filled on fire church? God led me there by a miracle of God. It's a long story. Come on. Why did, why did I mature fast? Why? Because I just kept doing what I knew to do. Right? Inside. Get to church. Okay, I'm off to church. And I went to my parents' church, which, you know, wasn't, wasn't a spirit-filled on fire church. And I asked God for more. I, I said, God, I need, I need the more. I need the more. This isn't going to work. But I ran to church. I got an on-fire church. I knew, I knew, I knew, right? I knew I was supposed to do that, right? I knew it. And so I did it. And so I got, I got more light. Amen? Amen. And I submitted to his word and I got with the body. And then what I do when I get to church, I say, uh, where can I help? Did anyone say, did anyone say, boy, you know what? You need to, you need to get busy for Jesus right now. No, I started immediately. Where can I serve? What can I do? What can I do? Vacuum, fine. Windows, fine. Children's, fine. Whoo, that was rough. <laughs> Come on now. Youth, got on the youth. Whoo, we had some time. I had the junior high youth for several years. Whoo. <laughs> Whoo. Come on now. I served. I served. Come on. I was walking in the light that I knew immediately. Come on. I, I told you before, I started giving immediately. No one said, boy, you, you, better be a, you better be a tither. You better be a giver. You, I just started writing checks. Amen. In fact, I wrote checks all over the place. I didn't just write checks to my church. I'm writing checks. I'm like, I was watching a ministry on TV. I'm like, boy, this is good. Woo, glory. Check going in the mail. Boom. Yeah. Why? Because if you actually believe in something, you support it. Amen. Come on now. Why? What am I saying? All this was coming out of me and I was walking in the light that I had. And so many people stop right away, right? Woo! They get a little light and they're like, woo, that's enough. That's enough right there. That's enough. More, more, exactly. More submission to God. Come on. More submission to God. More, more. Come on now. You, you want to you be, be in a service that's on fire, off the chart service? You want to be in a service like that? You really want to be in a service like that? Yes. I got one yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, saints. It's going to happen. The most powerful services you will ever be in is in a service where everybody is fully submitted to him. You will not find a better service than that. You will not find a better party than that. Hello? This is the time. This is the hour. We cannot keep saying later, 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 some other day, or the old was better. The old was so good. If I could have just walked with Jesus. No, it's time for God's glory to be revealed through his children now. 
And do not, do not think it's someone else's job. Hello? Amen. Well, you know, the pastor, the pastor, that's his job. He's got to, you know, I mean, he's got to be on fire. He's got to manifest the presence of God. He's got to be, you know, he's got to be in prayer. He's got to be in the word. I don't. Oh, wrong. Wrong. We got to decide to do our part. We got to decide to have real zeal for God. Come on. We got we to gotta decide to really submit to him. We got to decide that we're going to boldly shine for him. And I say boldly on purpose. Amen. Boldly shine for Jesus. Come on. Who glory. We are getting to the time saints where it is going to be like Daniel. Where the, the government walks up to us and say, you don't do that anymore. And we say, yes, we do. Amen. Did you hear me? What did they say, Daniel? Uh, you don't pray anymore. And he said, yes, I do. And they threw him in the lion's den. And of course, God protected him in the lion's den. The glory of God revealed in the lion's den. Why? If you've been listening, you know the answer. Why was the glory of God revealed in the lion's den? Doer and he submitted. He's a doer. That's a doer. Anybody who submits to God, he submitted to God and he said, as we would say, you told me not to pray. Let me tell you what God said about that. <laughs> Let me tell you what God said about praying. Make your requests known unto God with thanksgiving. Oh, we, we don't like that thanksgiving stuff either. You will not pray and you will not give thanks to God. Oh, oh, you, you really, I won't. We're going to see about that right now. Yeah. Father, <laughs> right in the presence of the darkness, right? Yeah. Right in the presence of the enemy, right in the presence of the devil-filled people. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right. the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you watch the devils run. Come on now. Huh? What did I say? I used boldly on purpose. I did. Saints, it's time to shine. Yeah. It's no longer time to hide in the back room. Come on. It's no longer time to be in the closet. Now you can go to your closet and pray as Jesus said. Amen. Go to your closet and pray. And your father will reward you openly. Amen. But it's no longer time to hide Jesus. Yeah. Well, I don't want to know. I don't want to be known. I'm a Jesus freak. I hear him. Right? They say, are you, are, you one of those, are you one of those Jesus people? Do you go to that Pacific Bible church? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes I do. And I love Jesus. Oh, I love him a lot. Let me tell you about him. I'm going to tell you about Jesus right now. They say, oh, I don't want to hear about that. No, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about that. Yeah, let me tell you about Jesus. Let, and you watch the devils run. Come on now. You want to be real? Yeah, yeah. Or you want to be a lukewarm? No. Come on. I want to be the real deal. Yeah. I want to be the real deal. The real believer. We've been talking about reality here for weeks. It's all tied together. It's all tied together. Real, the reality. Come on. Reality. Real Christians. Real believers. Authentic. And authentic, real believers, woo just got this, carry the presence of God. Yeah. <laughs> 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 woo! Come on now. 
Real believers carry the presence of the living God. And if you are a real believer and you know you're a real believer, don't hide it. Don't shove it down and say, well, I don't want to be that, you know, I don't want to be that Jesus freak that, you know, they talked about in that song. <laughs> I don't really care if they label me a Jesus freak. Is that right? I don't really care if they find out it's true. <laughs> Come on. That's what I'm saying today. We got to be the Jesus freak we're called to be. And we got to manifest his glory. We got to manifest his presence. We got to manifest the real God to the people, to the darkness. Ooh, and, and, and some, come on, some are going to come to the light. Some are going to see it. And some are going to say, I want it. We know all won't. We know that. That's, that's prophesied. But some are. And saints, we got to do our part. Amen. We got to do our part. Come on now. Who, who haven't you told about Jesus yet that you need to? Who haven't you manifested the glory to that you need to? Come on now. Time is short. Time is running out. Jesus, the return of Jesus is imminent. I mean, it is imminent. And if you believe in the rapture of the church, which I do, we're going to be gone. Boom. Come on now. And things are going to get really dark when the church leaves. I mean, you talk about dark now, it is dark. I mean, I'm talking no truth. Come on, get the picture. I'm talking, I'm talking like dark's never been seen before. Darkness of darkness. When the salt and the light are gone. You talk about darkness. Whew, come on. I'm already, I'm already censored in all kinds of things from telling truth. Can you imagine? Well, that's communism, right? And as I've said for years, Communism is simply defined as godlessness. If you want to define it simple as you possibly can, it's godlessness. No God allowed. That's communism. And that's what's coming to our country currently. Now, I don't, I don't believe it's going to turn around completely. I don't believe that because, because the book of Revelation says it's going to be darker than ever and, and blood will rise to the horse's bridle. And I, I don't know how, how that looks. I don't, I, we don't know how it looks right now, but it's going to get ugly. Yeah. But what can we do right now? Manifest his glory right now. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> you get this? The candy, now and later. <laughs> and who's that now and later? Come on, that's my era. You guys had now and later? I'm surprised you had now and later. I thought that was old candy. I want the glory now and I want it later. Amen. In eternity, amen? I want the glory now though. I don't want to just assign it to later as many do. Later, later, later. Glory, later. Heaven, glory, later. No, now. Now, whoo, I'm telling you what, the Spirit's all over that. I hope you're hearing this today. Because this is a serious word. And this is, I believe this is a God word for today. And if you want to shove it aside, that's your choice. But God is saying now, now, do it now, submit now, do my word now, follow after me now with all you are. Give me everything now. Do all I've asked you to do now. Follow after me now. Manifest my glory now. Talk to him now. Talk to her now. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I've said it for years. You do not want to end up in glory 
and, and go to the judgment, the white throne judgment where all the, all the non-believers will be judged and thrown into the lake of fire forever. You do not want to look over at the judgment and I believe we'll see it. The great white throne judgment where all those who rejected Jesus will be thrown into the lake of fire forever. You do not, I do not want to stand there and look across the gap and look at relatives, look at friends, look at people I knew as they're thrown into the lake of fire forever. And I never said a word to them about Jesus. Now, if, you, if you've, you've witnessed them, you've, you've, you've manifested God to them in some capacity, good. I think about many of my high school friends that, that I ministered to the word of God after I was saved. I wasn't saved in high school. So I, I, I contacted many of them through Facebook and, and many of them uh, I, I contacted, but many of them had one, nothing to do with that. But I will stand there at judgment. No blood on my hands. In fact, I think it's Ecclesiastes. I'm not sure. You can look it up. But it says, if you don't tell them, the blood will be on your hands. I don't want no blood on my hands. That's why I've aimed my Christian life to tell everybody. Come on now. Amen. Have I failed? Absolutely, I failed. But I've made it, I've made it a goal. And that book is a goal. That, that, all, telling people about Jesus, come on. Woo, come on, that should be a goal. Amen? Yeah, yeah. And manifesting his, his glory to them. Amen? Yeah, amen? Manifesting God to them, right? Who can you pray for at work? Who can you lay hands on who's sick? Have you asked him? Come on now. I prayed for people in my secular work jobs. Have you, have you laid hands on people and said, can I pray for you? Can I lay hands on you? The Bible says lay, believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can I pray for you? They might say no, that's fine. But you're missing an opportunity to manifest the glory of God. Lazarus. Glory. Jairus, Jairus had, his, had his daughter healed, right? The glory was revealed. He believed. The woman with the issue of blood believed. Come on now. She manifested the glory of God because she had faith. Yeah, and faith is? <laughs> Someday I'm going to lay hands on the sick because I will have enough faith. No, God says now. Someday I'm going to prophesy. No, do it now. Someday I'm going to pray in tongues. No, do it now. Come on up. Someday. God's saying today, how about now? How about right now? In the new covenant, the better covenant covenant based upon better promises. You can walk in the glory. I can walk in the glory. We can walk in the presence of God and we can manifest him. Come on. We can manifest him to those around us. We can manifest the glory of God and their people will, many of them will believe as they see the glory of God revealed in front of them. Don't worry about the ones that don't believe. Don't worry about it. Just go ahead and be, the, be who you're called to be in Christ. Manifest the glory of God where you are at now. Come on now. Shh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Come on, let's give him some praise for a minute here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory. 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 We want the glory, Father. We want the heaviness, Father. We want you, Father. We want your presence, Father. We want you, Father. We want your manifest glory. We want you, Jesus. We want you. We want you. Woo, come on. We want you. Come on, tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them you want them. 
Tell him you want his glory. Tell him you want his presence. Tell him. Come on. Father, we want you. Father, we want you. We want your presence in this place. We want your presence. We want your manifest presence. We want all that you are. We want you. We want you more than anything. We want you. We desire you. We desire you, Father. We desire after you. We hunger after you. We thirst after you. We desire you more than anything, more than our necessary food. We want you, Father. We want you. 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 you. Father, we want you. Father, we want you. Hallelujah. We want you. We want you. We want you. We want your presence. We want you forever. We want you. We love you forever. We love you, Father. Forever. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory. 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 We want glory. We want your glory. We want to see your glory. We want you manifested, Father. We want to see you as Moses said he wants to see you. We want to see your glory. We want it. We want it, Father. We want it. We want it. We desire you. We want you. We desire you. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You see, he, he loves to hear that from his people. He loves to hear that. He loves to hear that people want him. Even his own children, he wants to know. He wants to know that they want him. And any body of believers right now together, gathered together, can have his presence. When they desire him, he'll show up. He'll show up. He'll show up. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yes, he loves to hear that we want him. He loves to hear we want his presence. We, he loves to hear that we want to be with him. Oh, more than the movie, more than the sports game. He loves us to say, we want you, Father, more than anything. We want you more than anything. There's nothing more that we want than you. There's nothing more we desire than you. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing comes before you, Father. Nothing comes before our God. Whoo! Hallelujah. For for in the heavens you will experience my glory, says the Lord. And you will be amazed at what you see. But don't neglect your current time on earth. Don't neglect what you have to do there. Don't neglect what I've given you to do there. For I have many works for you there. And I have many times for you to reveal my glory throughout your time on earth. So notice those times and be aware of those times and be ready for those times. For I will be visiting you very soon and I will speaking to you very soon to minister to someone around you. And he says, I'm asking you to listen and I'm asking you to obey. I'm asking you to follow. I'm asking you to submit to me, says the Father to us today. Hallelujah. 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 
Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, we will do it. Come on, tell them, yes, Father. I will listen and I will do. I will follow. I will submit to you. I will do it. I am yours. Completely yours. Forever. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on. Can you sense his presence here? It's because we've been talking to him. That was another whole point we talked about a whole week. We talk about him. We talk to him. We've been talking about him. We've been talking to him. We've been fellowshipping around his word. We've been praising him. We've been honoring him. And we've been drawn near to him. And he's showing up with his heaviness, with his presence. Hallelujah. Whoo. <laughs> Whoo, come on. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Come on, there's joy in his presence. There's joy in his presence. Come on, there's joy. There's joy in his presence. Come on, why, why, why did I fall on the floor and laugh? Ooh, there was joy. There was joy, manifested joy, presence of God, joy. Whoo! Come on, saints, we can have it now. We can have it right now. We can live in the glory now. It's time for glory now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to do it, saints? Are we really ready to do it? Are we really, really ready? <laughs> Are we really ready? And the better question is, are we going to do it? That's the big question. Are we going to do it? Come on. As, as Isaiah said, here, here am I, send me. Come on, tell God right there now. Father God, here am I. Send me into the darkness that I may be the light that you've called me to be, that I would shine bright for you and bring people into your kingdom to become children of the king, to become children of God. I want to manifest your glory to my friends, to my family, to all those around me. I want to be a manifester of your glory, of your presence. Show me, help me. I will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Whoo, we having a time. <laughs> Come on. We're just flowing with the Holy Ghost, amen? amen? As I say all the time, a lot of times we leave church before we even get in the spirit. We're still in the flesh. And we get in the car and have the same argument we have with our wife on the way to church. <laughs> that was funny. Come on, have some laughing in this place. Have a little joy in this place. <laughs> have, a little, have a little joy yeah. in the presence of the Lord. Because he is present. Amen. He is here, saints. Yeah. God is here. We can't see. And if you see something, praise the Lord for it. But we're not desiring to see it. We, we know it. We don't need to see it, amen. We don't need to see it. I know there's angels here. Amen. I know. Come on, Jesus is here. 
Come on, Jesus is speaking. Jesus is talking. Because we're honoring him in this place. We're honoring Jesus in this place. We're honoring God in this place. And whenever, whenever God is honored, he's going to show up. He is going to show up where he is honored. Come on. Oh, we honor you, Father. We love you. Oh, Father, we love you. We honor you. We glorify you and you alone. Hallelujah. There's nothing better than our God. There's nothing better than his presence. There's nothing better than him. Glory. Whoo. Well, I suggest you listen to that again. I'm going to listen to that again. Because often, you know, as I say around here, it doesn't get down deep. It takes a little bit to get down deep, right? It takes a little bit to get that, to get it down deep on the inside where it's living on the inside. As Jesus said, my words must live in you. My words got to abide in you. And then my, my brothers and sisters, we're going to produce fruit. Amen. We are going to produce fruit if we will do the word. If we will actually do what God said, we are going to produce fruit. It will happen. It will happen. But we have to get that word on the inside of us. We have to live in it. Come on. Karn, Karn said, you know, you know all those scriptures because you kind of have a photographic memory. I said, well, I, 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 there are things I do kind of pick up real quick. But I said, I'll tell you why I know all those scriptures. I've seen them hundreds of times. Hello? I didn't read Galatians once. I didn't read Ephesians once and go, well, I, I, I got Ephesians down. I didn't read Romans once. Hello? If you want the reality of God, this has got to be living. This is, this, is a, this is ink on a page, but it's also the word of God. And so the ink on the page doesn't do anything for us. When we just read the Bible and kind of explain the Bible a little bit and we have a little nice little service, a nice little message, right? <laughs> nice little message. That's not it. This word has got to get down on the deep on the inside. Amen. Where we know so many scriptures. Come on. We, 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 we are like a walking, walking Bible. <laughs> Come on now. Why? No, not because of memory. Come on now. Because we've seen it so many times. Because we read it again. And 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 we read it again. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I turn to Romans 8. Here we go. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. What's it say right after that? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. People say, I'm not condemned in Christ. I'm not condemned in Christ. I'm not condemned in Christ. I say, are you, are you walking in the Spirit? Come on now. There will be great condemnation if we walk in the flesh. Great condemnation. Paul turned a man over to Satan for the destruction of his, destruction of his flesh. That's some condemnation. That's judgment like you've never seen before, right? Why? Because he was walking in the flesh. Who do not walk according to this flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus may be free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. Yeah. See, those scriptures and many others, right, should roll off of our tongues. Because it's right down on the inside. 
And we've been meditating on it. Meditation is not an Eastern religion thing. It's a Bible thing. Meditation means we think on it and we think on it and we chew on it and we think on it again and we think on it again and we chew on it again and we chew on it again and we chew and we chew and we chew and we think like the cow with his cud and we chew on it again 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 and more revelation comes. I've had many verses I've thought about for years and all of a sudden, boom, I'm like, whoa. I've never seen that before. Read that verse a hundred times. Looked at it a hundred times. Never saw that before. Hello? Yeah. That's how deep the word is. Whew. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh, I'm just preaching. Yeah. I told you, watch out. We didn't know where this was headed. Yeah. Glory. 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 Wow. 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 <laughs> I'm looking at Romans 8. I have to wow it. Wow. You, can't, you can't look at Romans 8 and not wow it, can you? Come on. Look, look at this one. Look at this one. Romans 8.32 should roll off our tongues. Come on. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Glory! Glory. <laughs> Woo if you ever have a need, you go right to Romans 8.32 and you go, Woo! Glory! Father, you gave Jesus for me. You gave it all for me. So I know, Father, there's nothing for you to meet this need in my life. Amen. You got all things. You have everything. You own all the silver. You own all the gold. You've got everything. You own the cattle upon the hills. Father, there's nothing, nothing you can't supply. You give me freely all things. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I declare it today in Jesus' mighty name. And I declare it, Father, according to your word. Come on. I declare it according to your word, Father, that you said you shall freely give me all things. You're not holding back from me. No, the devil's holding back from me. And I command the devil to take his hands off of my stuff. Take his hands off of my finances. Take his hands off of everything he's got his hands on in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And everything that you've supplied, Father, will flow freely into my life. Because I know you are a God that supplies all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I'm in Christ and you have not run out of anything in glory. So I know, Father, every need will be supplied, every need will be met, and I believe you, Father, for it, and I thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, my Master. Amen. Amen. I wasn't planning on doing that, but I'll tell you what, I just prayed a prayer from the word of the living God, and that's how prayers are supposed to be prayed right there with faith, and from the Word. And that's what we need, saints. That's what we need. That's what we need. If we're going to manifest God's glory, we got to know what He said, and it's got to be living on the inside of us. And That makes us authentic. That makes us the real deal. That makes us real. Ooh, real. Real believers, come on, the real deal. The absolute real deal. I want to be the real deal, don't you? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> you think of things, you know, they come up. And... I was talking with a, a pastor not too long ago. I won't mention, of course, any names or anything like that. But we got down with our conversation. And I had just preached the message not too long ago after, before that, and you're going to recognize it as soon as I say it. He said, well, we were talking about a certain subject and a certain thing I was asking him to help us with, and he said he couldn't help us, and I said, oh, okay, that's no problem, no problem, because I know God's going to supply our need. And he said, well, good luck with that. 
I was speechless. I'm on the phone with a pastor. Bye bye. Click. The real deal. I question the real deal as soon as I hear that out of a pastor. What should he have said? What would have been a great reply of a pastor? You know what? We can't really help you with that. You know, we don't have the supply for that. We don't, you know, but I want to pray with you right now. I would have been like, thank you. And he could have prayed a prayer of faith. And we could have agreed together as Christian believers, yeah. brothers in Christ. Not as competitors, amen? Yeah. As brothers. Yeah. Right. And he could have believed with me. Yeah. I want to be the real deal. Yeah, amen. And I know to do that, saints, we got to have this. And it's got to live in us and it's got to dwell in us. It's got to be part of us. It cannot be a nice little book that sits on the coffee table. It cannot be a nice little book that people like to read for some good historical information. It has to be the living word of God. And not only it has to be living, we know it's living, but it has to get on the inside. Hmm. And that's submitting to him. And I tell you what, we will not truly submit to him until we know this. Not going to happen. Come on now. Because when we know this, we know what he said. And we will submit everything to him. Come on. That's why, that's why I say, walk in the light that you have. As soon as I heard, I, as soon as I heard baptism in the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Do you want that? Amen, Amen is right. Yeah. But I was talking about my story with it. I said, I don't know exactly what that is, but yeah, I want it. <laughs> and I ran up there and, and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. The, the assistant pastor took me back to the office and he read all the scriptures about it to me. And he's like, do you want that? I said, yeah. And he laid hands on me and I spoke with tongues for the first time. I haven't stopped since. Come on. Amen. And I went out to the car where Karen was waiting for me because we were in a spirit filled on fire church. She was raised Roman Catholic. She still had no clue what was happening. I barely had a clue what was happening. And she looked at me as I got into the driver's seat of, of my Plymouth Horizon with my big boom speakers in the back that got stolen. That's another whole story. Amen. And I get in my Plymouth Horizon and I'm in the driver's seat and I get in there and I look over at Karen and she's like, what happened to you? You're like glowing. I said, that's right. I just got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then I got to tell her about that. Woo! And she got it. She didn't get it right there, but she got it. She got it. Whew, come on now. Are we going to submit to his word? Yes. Are we going to live in his word? Is his word going to live in us? Yes. Are we just going to be churchgoers? Please no. Please no. God says please no. Amen. God says please get to know me. Be intimate with me. Talk with me. Get in my word and devour it. Let it live, live on the inside of you. And you will produce the manifested glory of the living God in this earth. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We honor you in this place. We glorify you and you alone in this place. No man gets any glory in this place. You get the glory, Father. You get the glory. You are our creator. You are our great God. You are the one we honor in this place. You are the only one worthy. 
forever. You are the one we worship in the door. And today we've learned from your word. We've looked at your word. We, we've, we've let the word abide in us. We've meditated on your word. We've heard a lot of your word today, Father, and we are submitting to it. We are submitting to your word and we will do it. And Father, we will let it dwell in us and live in us and we'll manifest your glory to this dark place we live in. We're going to be the bold, bold witnesses for Jesus, shining your glory, shining your manifested glory, seeing the sick healed, seeing the demon possessed set free, seeing the bound set free, seeing life come into darkness, seeing dark eyes opened and the dark eyes we looked into now have light in them because they received what you had to say. They received your word. They received the glory of God into their life. And Father, we will never take any glory. We know we're just following you and following your plan and doing what you want us to do in this earth. We will always turn back and give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise as we do today, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Glory. Wow. You know me, I always like to end with salvation call. This is the first step into glory. The first step is we got to become children of the living God. Not going to manifest the glory of God without being a child of God. So you become a child of God by receiving what Jesus did for you. We all have to receive Jesus as Lord of our lives and come out of the kingdom of darkness. As Colossians 3 says, we come out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of his dear son. All of sin fallen short of God's glory. The wages of sin is a death. That's eternal death, separation from God forever. Nothing good forever for all eternity without Christ. But God demonstrated his own love toward us and while we we're still sinners, Christ died for us. He paid the price for us. He died for us. He, he shed his blood for us. And without the remission of, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. And the Old Testament is a type and shadow of what was to come. They, shed, they sacrificed animals to cover their sin. Jesus was the final sacrifice and he paid the price for all sin to be washed away forever. And that blood is now on the mercy seat of heaven and it cries out, not guilty, to whoever, whoever will receive that blood. Whoever will receive the payment for their sin. You want to come into the kingdom today? You want to be born again today? You simply got to believe in Jesus. You got to believe he's alive and you got to confess him as Lord. You confess your allegiance to him forever. You don't play games with God. You don't try on Christianity. Come on. You don't try on Christianity. You come out of God's or the Satan of God or Satan's kingdom and you come into God's kingdom by committing yourself completely to him forever. That's why Paul said, I'm a doulos. I'm a slave of Christ. He becomes Lord. That's Kyrios in the Greek. That means you do whatever he says. <laughs> and he's always leading us to blessing. Amen. Oh, oh, you're going to go through some times where you're like, Lord, what am I doing here? He'll say, keep walking. You're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And you don't have to fear in the valley, do you? He says, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And you keep walking and God's with you every step of the way. Come on. And you come out on the other side. But the whole time you've been walking through the valley, you're saying, glory. Amen? You just keep saying glory. Hallelujah. But if you have not come into the kingdom yet, you aren't a child of God yet. You're here, you're online. You have not made Jesus your Lord. You have not submitted to him. Woo, today is the day now. In fact, the Bible even says, today is the day of salvation. A lot of people like to put it off to later, don't they? Someday I'm going to get saved and I'm going to serve God. But right now I want to party. Right now I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't want to submit to him. No, now is the day because we don't know when he's returning. We don't know the day or the hour. Jesus said it. You better be ready. I better be ready. Amen. 
So if that's you today and you say, I want to come into the kingdom, I want to be born again, I want to come into Christ, I want to become a new creation in Christ, I want all my sin forgiven. Pray this prayer after me right now. Say, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess I was a sinner. I repent of all sin. I repent of all works of darkness. I repent of everything I've done wrong in your sight. I receive the payment that Jesus paid for me. I receive the payment. The blood of Jesus paid for my sin. <laughs> I submit completely to you, Father. I am yours forever. Jesus is alive. Jesus is my Lord forever. Heavenly Father, teach me your ways. Show me your ways. And I will walk in them. And I will be an obedient child in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory. If that was you today and, and you just became a, a believer, a Christian, a, a new creation in Christ, you were actually born again. And if you confess Jesus from your heart, you are born again. You are a new creation. And I always say, if you want to be fruitful, you want to get busy, as we should all want to do for the Lord, go out and be a witness today for Jesus. Now, amen? Devour the word of God. Now. Amen. Get involved in an on-fire church now. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit now. Notice this now is coming through again, isn't it? Start serving in the body now. Worship and pray and praise throughout your day. Come on, now. Well, someday I'm going to really worship God. Someday I'm going to really serve God. Someday I'm going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Someday, someday, someday. No, now. Amen. If you want to grow up, amen. And never, ever, 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 ever forget when you've come into Christ, you now belong to him and whatever he says goes. And like I said earlier, he wants to lead you into blessing. He wants to lead you into good things. Come on. I, 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 I come here every day thinking I'm living in a miracle of God. Come on now. And I am. He led me into this spot right here. I could tell you a lot of stories that don't sound so good because I was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But he led me. My Lord Jesus led me right here. And so I got to live in a miracle every single day of my life. Whew, hallelujah. You can have it too. It's not just for Vern. It's not just for Pastor Vern. It's for every child of the living God. To live your life following after him. Live your life following the Lordship of Jesus. And one day you end up in a spot, you're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know it could be this good. Come on now. Because he led you right to the perfect spot when you worked at 7-Eleven for 12 years. Oh, glory. Oh man, I could tell you some stories, couldn't I? But he'll get you the right place. Just keep walking in the light. Because he is so good. He is so good. He is so good, saints. He is so good. We cannot describe the goodness of God. We can't do it in English. I got to pray in tongues to do it. Because he is that good. Hallelujah. If you don't believe that today, make sure you get your mind renewed. Amen. I might have to add that to the list. Well, I did. That's devour the word. Amen. When you devour the word, you get your mind renewed. And you stop thinking, stinking, thinking. Oh, I can't stand stinking, thinking. Oh, man. I was just telling, I was just telling Paige. I was telling her, you know, there, there are, there are Christians all over the place, or at least churchgoers, right? That you could, you could go to them and you would say, say this, you know, that, that, that 16 year old boy was taken in that car accident and I know God had a reason for it. 
And there are churchgoers all over the world that would say, yeah, you're right. God had a reason for taking that 6 year old boy home. That's stinking thinking. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God is always trying to lead us out of the problem. God is always trying to get us into the blessing. There's always a reason. Like to pray, you know, people say, what's that, what's that phrase? Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, there is a real reason behind it too. Like we weren't listening to the Lord. We weren't fellowshipping with the Lord. We weren't praying to the Lord. Come on up. There are real reasons things happen. That is very true. There are real reasons. Not, not the sovereignty of God mentality that God just takes people off the earth. I'll tell you, who, who, did, who, did, who did God take? Remember Enoch? He took him home in glory. He was and he was not. Because he loved God. If I ever just disappear one day, just say, he went with God. <laughs> Amen? Come on now, if you ever just disappear, he went with God. I, I wouldn't mind going like that. Would you mind going like that? Psh. God doesn't take people in death. That's the devil. I know many stories, people who blame God for all kinds of things. That is stinking thinking. Get your mind renewed. Get out of the gutter. Get out of the junk and live in here. Amen? Amen. Live in the truth. Live in the reality. Oh, you want to get me mad? Start talking like that. Stinking thinking. Because what does that do? Oh, here we go. What does that do when you start talking like that? That dishonors my father. And I hate it. I hear a Christian talk like that. I'm like, I don't even want to be in your presence ever again. Why? What does the Bible say? Turn away from them that deny the power of the living God. You tell me God took that six year home. You want to punch him in the face. But, you know, I'm sanctified. I wouldn't do that. Come on now. We got to think in line with God. We are not going to manifest the reality of God thinking like that junk. Someone dies in an accident, you say, God took him home. No. No. Stinking thinking. Get your mind renewed. Amen? Oh, I hate when people dishonor my father. I want to I won't say it. I was thinking of Phineas again. <laughs> oh, glory. I love my daddy God. Don't you love him? Oh, I love my daddy. My daddy God is so good to me. My daddy God is so merciful. My daddy God is so wonderful. My daddy God is woo, off the charts. He is beautiful, as we sang this morning. He is amazing. He is wonderful. What's that, song? What's that song, sir? Wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful. Come on, sing it. Beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful. Beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. That's our daddy God. That's our father. And we get to be with him forever. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for speaking to us today. We thank you for changed lives today, renewed minds today, and people walking in your truth and abiding in your truth. 
We love you, Father. We give you all the praise today. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Amen.